a small question based upon instruction sets. They have given the following instruction sequence where R1, R2 and R3 are the general purpose registers under consideration and memory of X is the operation that denotes the content at the memory location X. Now this is the in the tabular format we have been given the instruction sequence which will be executed and at the end of that we need to determine what will be the output and the details are given over here assuming that the contents of the memory location 5000 is 100 so initially at the location 5000 the content stored is 10 and the content of the register r3 is 3000 so r3 register is initially containing 3000 the content of each of the memory locations from 3000 to 3020 is 50 so now from the memory locations we can denote like this from 3000 till 3020 all of them are having the same data that is 50. Now the instruction sequence given in the tablet format starts executing from the memory location 1000. So this is where the instruction set starts execution. All the numbers are in the decimal format. Assume that the memory is byte addressable. So after this execution of the given program is complete, we have to determine what will be the content of the memory location 3010. Initially it will be lying over here. So its content initial content is 50. After the execution of this instruction set, we have to determine what will be the updated value in that location. So now coming to the instruction set, we have been given the instruction and it's semantic as well for us to understand what is it exactly doing. And this is the size of the instruction. How many bytes is it consuming? That is not really of any use to us. Now let us have a look at the instructions, what they are doing. The first one, MOV. R1 5000. So what this instruction is doing, it is moving the contents of memory location 5000 into the register R1. So what do we have at location 5000? We have 10. So in R1, we will be moving the data content as 10. Then MOV R2 R3, which means we are moving the content of the location given by R3 into register R2. Now in register R3, the content is 3000. So we are not moving 3000. We are moving the content at memory location of R3 into R2, which means the location 3000, the content at this location will be moved to register R2. So R3 has data 3000 and content at that data given by this, what is it? 50. So this 50 is actually being moved to R2. Next, add R2, R1 means we are adding the contents of both and then writing the result to the R2 itself. So after this, the R2 will get the content as 10 plus 50 equal to 60. Next, MOV, R3 and R2. Now here we can see R3 is used with the parenthesis which means not R3 register itself, but the memory location given by the address stored in R3. What's the address in R3? It is 3000. So at the memory location of 3000, we are storing or we are overwriting it with the contents of R2. So now at 3000, what do we initially have? 50. But now we are overwriting it with the contents of R2. So this becomes 60 next increment r3 now r3 is having 3000 so it will be incremented to 3001 next decrement r1 what is r1 having it is having 10 that is being decremented by 1 so now this r1 gets 9 now next instruction is bnz 1004 what is bnz branch if not zero which means this is a loop actually until and unless we get the value zero we have to keep looping and how are we looping we are going back to the memory location 1004 now we know that the execution started at location 1000 and this loop condition is just after the decrement r1 so unless the value stored in this r1 becomes zero 
we will keep looping we will go back to the start and we will execute the same sequence of instructions once again so right now the value in r1 is 9 and it is keeping it keeps on decrementing by 1 in every iteration of the loop so 9 8 7 and so on it will continue so let us trace out the loop it will execute a total of 9 times from the value of r1 9 till 1 and in every iteration of the loop what is the main thing we are doing in every iteration these are the two important instructions we are executing we are incrementing the value of r3 by 1 and we are decrementing the value of r1 by 1 other than these two instructions this rest of the part is not actually doing any important functionality and this reinitialization will not take place in every iteration of the loop we will simply be working with these two instructions so let us trace out those nine iterations of the loop the values of r3 and r1 we are writing initially it is 3001 and 9 in the next iteration they will be changed to 3002 and 8 so on till 3001 3000 oh, this r3 is incrementing and this one is decrementing so at the end what happens is this changes to 3001 to up to 3009 let us say let us write it properly so when r3 will be 3009 then r1 would have turned to 1 then in the next iteration this will be 3010 and 0 but here this will not actually be iterating over because the instruction is branch not 0 so when r1 becomes 0 the iteration will stop over here and this will not loop further so we are executing until this point itself so now this is our loop and after we come out of the loop we are halting so this is the nine number of times nine iterations we have traced out and in every iteration what we are basically doing we are changing the values given by the corresponding we can have a look over here in this particular instruction we are moving in r3 the contents of r3 the value of r2 like in the current instruction which we were all watching the contents of r2 were 60 and we wrote that at the location 3000 so in the next iteration 3001 that would be changed with something then 3002 that would be changed with something but we are moving only till 3009 so by the end of the loop we will be performing m of 3000 of 9 in this location we would be storing the contents of r2 at that time not the current contents which is 60 at that time whatever will be the contents that would be stored at the location 3009 and that would be our last instruction after which we will be halting so basically looking we are not changing the value at the location 3010 because we stopped before that itself so the initial value which was there in that location that will stay the same it is not being altered so initially there was 50 in this location and we are not changing it even after execution of the given instruction set so that will be same as 50 at the end of the instruction as well hence after execution of the program the content of memory location 3010 is still 50 so that will be our answer